Do you know that 46% of Google searches are for local businesses? You guys, my local brick and mortar service-based businesses, this episode is for you. Let's get real. If you're running a brick and mortar business, raising some kiddos and juggling all of life's offerings, let's be real and call you what you are. You, my friend, are rebel woman. You've put your blood, sweat, and tears in creating a storefront that lights you up serves your clients well, and contributes significantly to the community you love. You are my hero. And I'm pretty sure we could sit down and talk shop for hours because I get it. I have a brick and mortar business myself for over 12 years, a handful of kids, and a few passion projects that I love, like this one. Hey there, everybody. My name is Melissa Rose, and I am your visibility coach for brick and mortar businesses who want more clients coming in their doors. I have a passion for helping and serving those who are also living life on the edge, going for their dreams, and creating a legacy through their kick-ass business. In this podcast, we're going to share the nitty-gritty of running a successful brick-and-mortar business. We're going to share stories, we're going to talk strategy, and we're going to learn practical tips that leave you inspired, empowered, and equipped to create the life of your dreams. Are you ready? Let's get real. Hey there, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Brick and Mortar Visibility. I am your host, Melissa Rose, and as always, it's so great to be here. The sun is shining. It is freaking cold in Wisconsin. Oh my gosh. I am recording this on March 10th, and I'm just downward cranky about the weather. I had a yoga class this morning, and they teased me. They're like, Melissa, this is what March is. It could be 50 degrees, or it could be 20 below. We just don't know. And right now, it was three degrees this morning, and I'm thankful I don't have to work outside in it, but just knowing that it's cold like that makes me cold. So, um, but by the time that this airs, it's going to be warmer. I guarantee it. So I am super excited about this episode because this is a topic that I talk a lot about with my clients when we first start. A lot of clients come to me because they want more visibility. They want more people coming in the doors. They want more profits in their pockets, but they also want to be able to hire another team member. So they have that more, that time freedom, or they want to scale to some online products or services so that they can scale and grow that way. And when we dive in a little bit deeper and dig in, I always come back to who you are, what you do and who you serve. And one of the ways we do that is clarifying your message, but then we have to clarify that message and get it out to the people. And how do people find you? People are going to Google you. They're going to look for you. That is the number one way people find you, okay? So I want your SEO to be top-notch. Today's episode, we have a guest on content creation and SEO maximization, Amber Peterson. Before we dive into her amazing episode, I want to just have a listener shout out. We have a rating and review from Miranda Von Fricken. She was on the podcast episode on number 108. She is our LinkedIn expert, you guys. She has a workshop coming up in April. If you are not on LinkedIn, go back and listen to this episode 108. She may convince you to be on it because she is all things LinkedIn. Here is her lovely review. Love, love, love. Such fantastic energy and information. It's practical. We can implement right away and full of resources. Wonderful show. Melissa is fun to listen to as well. Thank you, Miranda. And again, go check out our episode. That one was super helpful and people are eating it up. Again, she's got a workshop coming up in April. I'll link that in the show notes as well. Um, Very reasonably priced and full of jam-packed information. This episode is jam-packed. In fact, it's probably going to be a bit longer than most of the episodes that we record. However, it is so, so important. And if you listen to this episode and you think, man, I really got to do this. I just don't know how to break it down or how to get started. I'm your girl. I can help you. This is exactly what I do in my business for clients. I help you figure out, break it down. I know there are so many things we should be doing as brick and mortar service-based businesses. All right. We can read all the books. We can listen to all the podcasts and we can try to do all the things, but my zone of genius is helping you break it down into actionable steps that get done. All right. I invite you to check out one-on-one coaching. If you go to MsMelissaRose.com forward slash coaching, that is my one-on-one program. I have two spots available. This is geared toward that brick and mortar service-based business or a service-based business that wants to grow and scale. 
and they are overwhelmed with all the day-to-day stuff that you have to do, and they can't even fathom getting bigger or growing more because there's just so much on their plate right now. So we're going to sift through that and narrow down exactly what needs to get done right now so that you can take those actionable steps every week and see progress and grow forward so that we can add on a team member and get things delegated and off your plate and automated so that you can finally see and feel that time freedom that you deserve. If that sounds like something you want and desire, I invite you to check out my one-on-one coaching program, MsMelissaRose.com forward slash coaching. Now, Amber is an expert in SEO. She has some great nuggets here. We talk about how to create great content that gets you found. We talk about how to repurpose that content in creative ways. She's got some really great ideas. And then we talked about the importance of doing that blog and how that just genuinely helps your business so, so much. I know it doesn't sound sexy all, but it's so, so important and it's so, so good for your business. So I hope you enjoy this episode as much as I do. It's my geeky self coming out real time. (laughs) So enjoy my podcast interview with the lovely and knowledgeable Amber Peterson. Amber Peterson, welcome to the Brick and Mortar Visibility Podcast. How are you? Good. How are you? So good to see you. Thanks for coming on. I'm super excited to talk about this really geeky subject, SEO. Mm -hmm. Me too. I could talk about it forever. If you would have asked me five years ago, if I would be so into it, you would have laughed at me because I barely knew how to work my computer six years ago. I used Facebook and email. That's all I did, y'all. And to now understand and have a concept and be somewhat dangerous, know enough to be dangerous. Um, Amber is our expert though. So I'm super excited for you to dive in. So tell everybody who you are, what you do, who you serve, where you're coming in from, all the fun stuff. Sure. Um, So yeah, my name is Amber. My business is Pinwheel Strategic Marketing. Um, It is a kind of a pairing of content creation and SEO kind of married together. So I work primarily with women-owned businesses who are looking to expand their visibility through attracting people to their website with really great content. And the big thing that I've learned from my clients is either you're writing great content, but they're like, nobody's reading it. And we realize like, there's no SEO behind it, or they've paid SEO experts, they've done all that. And they've got a website, but they they aren't creating really good content. So they're not standing apart from their competitors. So my agency kind of marries the two where we're working to create the content and optimize it for SEO. So it's kind of the, the perfect match, I feel like, because you really need both you'll hear lots of people say, oh, it's SEO is more important, content's more important, but you can write the most beautiful content in the world if no one's reading it, except for your mom. It's pretty useless. And you can have a great SEO strategy, but if people get to your website and they're like, eh, it's fine, and they leave, also not great. So we like to put those two together and really create a good visibility strategy. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <clears throat> I get so many um, clients who want that website looking so pretty and so lovely. And I'm a big advocate of B plus work. I'm okay. Like B plus work gets the job done, but don't get so caught up in how pretty it looks. If it's not, if if there's no meat behind it, if there's no substance behind it. And that's what you're going to talk about. Um, Real quickly, personally, uh, you have kiddos, you're a mom. Tell us a little bit where you are. I do. Um, So I live in Washington state, about an hour north of Seattle, and I have three daughters, um, ages five to almost 12. I'm married to my actually high school boyfriend. We're married almost 20 years. And we have a little Boston Terrier that we love. We like to hike and go wine tasting. Washington has amazing wineries. Just get outside as much as possible. We do a lot of camping in the summer. Um, We love to travel. We're going to Hawaii in March. We're so excited because we haven't gone anywhere really in forever. But yeah, we just really like to kind of enjoy where we live. I grew up in Alaska. So as to my husband, so we talk a lot about like Washington looks like Alaska, but you have amenities, which is, (laughs) um, but yeah, it's um, kind of crazy life with three kids. They're, they're all dancers. So I do a lot of dance studio drop-offs and pickups and working out of my car, all that kind of stuff. So Um, But it's fun. I always wanted three daughters. So now that one of them is entering teenage years, I'm not so sure about that wish, but we'll see how it goes. Yep. Just one day at a time, lady. One day at a time. You've got this. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So can you just tell us, I know what SEO means, 
search engine optimization. But in layman's terms, what the heck does that mean? What does that mean for business? Yeah, so really it's just the simplest way to say it is it's choosing the right words and phrases that when people go to Google and they type in a question, they type in a search query, you're hitting those words and phrases. So when we go to Google, you know, to ask a question, when you type it in, you'll see like an autofill, you know, and those are like common questions right there. Google is telling you, this is what people search for. So you want your website and your content to answer those questions and utilize the same terms and phrases. It's really the simplest way to say it, but people get very like, ooh, when they hear SEO, Mm because it sounds complicated. And for myself, even I thought it was very complicated until I really dived into it. And it's like, okay, it's kind of like a puzzle that you're just kind of figuring out, like, what are my customers, my clients looking for? And how do I show up for them in Google search? Yes. But the technicality of it, and that it doesn't have to be hard. I got caught up in the technicality of like, Mm -hmm. oh my gosh, this has to be um, hard, but there's different ways to do this. And so brick and mortar businesses, you guys, we are local. We are local to our community and 46% of Google searches are for local businesses. They are looking for you. People are trying to find, where do I send my kids to take dance? Where's the best pizza place in town? What's the best chiropractor near me? They are finding those places. So we need to be on top of that. And so many brick and mortar business owners do not take advantage of this. So it doesn't have to be hard. So what is one way that business owners can help with that SEO? So in my opinion, the best way is to have some sort of content on your website that you're optimizing. So local businesses, I think is almost easier to rank for SEO because you're already getting like niche down by location or town, you know, wherever you're at people, if they're looking for a dance studio, they're not just putting dance studio, they're putting dance studio near me. And then Google's looking at their location because everything's always like looking where we're at. And so If you're hitting all of those local points, and then if you have constant, not constant, but like frequent new content that also talks about all those little keywords, then it's not only just like your address on your website that's like ranking, it's all these other pieces. Because the more touch points you have on your website, the higher you rank. So for example, um, let's say a restaurant. A lot of people I speak to who have local businesses, they're like, well, what the heck am I going to write about? Like, I'm a restaurant. But if you, like your website, of course, should have all of the the normal things. But if you also have a blog where maybe you talk about festivals in your town and or you create, like maybe you live somewhere that the tourists come through. Uh, My town specifically, we have a strawberry festival every spring. So if someone was like, Googling the strawberry festival. And I created a blog post that said best itinerary for the Marysville strawberry festival. Then, and my restaurant is in that blog post, not only are you providing information to the kind of taps into your whole area, which is nice for building links and linking to other businesses, but you also are showing up in a really helpful piece of content for someone who wants to visit your area. So it's sort you're feeding the Google algorithm, but you're also providing something of value because we all know now that consumers, they, they do more research now. They're a little more savvy. They, they want to know about um, not only what you offer, but what else are you, what are you like? People just don't make decisions like that. They want to look into it. And so if you provide something of value and they can look at your business and be like, wow, that was really helpful. That's going to stick in their mind especially local businesses. I get a lot of like, I don't know what I would write about once a week or once every other week. Look at your entire community. You don't want to talk about yourself every week anyways. You want to be, you know, the community over competition type thing. So think about your area as a whole. What could you talk about? And what are other people Googling about that you could land among that search? I just did this with my blog two weeks ago with The Dancing House because you actually inspired me to go back to this. So everybody, as you know, I have a dance studio. And when I first started really paying attention to SEO and really paying attention to digital marketing, I started a blog because that's what they told me I needed to do. But I had no idea what I was going to write about. So what I did, y'all, is I just wrote like a really short four-section blog. And the first part was just, hey, how you doing? Second part was highlighting a student. 
third part was telling a new class that was up and coming or a, a workshop that we were doing. And the fourth part was something to do in the community. And I didn't realize that that was intuitively right to do because I was creating value for my client by showcasing another venue or a place to go to, like a theater show or a children's workshop or a children's theater workshop. And then I was creating community by highlighting that student. And then, of course, I was selling as well. So, and by selling, I was using those keywords, tap class for littles or tap class for three-year-olds or something like that. So it was just very intuitive. And now we've done that blog, you guys, consistently. And that's the key word there. We do it every two weeks. And we've been doing it for, what, five or six years now. And we hit that block, we email it to our list. And this past Sunday, we had a 56% open rate on our email. And my admin the next day, I didn't look at the numbers yet, but she goes, holy cow, we just had an influx of registrations for this week. And that's pretty normal that we'll get sales right after we hit publish. But then I looked at the open rate for the email and it was just like, it's working as far as just really paying attention to subject line and all that fun stuff that I geek out on. But it's because of that blog that we've been consistent with people expect it in their newsletter every other week now. And it's just, it's just this compound effect that we're feeling, which is we're very thankful for, but it comes back to that consistency. Yeah, absolutely. And you touched on repurposing the blog content. I think a lot of people get overwhelmed with marketing activities in general, because everybody is telling you like, you need a blog, you need to be on social media, you need to be on, you know, TikTok, like all the things. And so people get like almost deer in a headlights, like not, I'm not going to do anything, mm-hmm. but you can take one blog post and turn that into a newsletter. You can break it up and turn it into social media posts. You can, especially if you feature other businesses, you can send them the blog and say, Hey, I wrote this. I featured you. If you'd like to share it, I'd love that. There are so many ways that you can take one piece of content and turn it into weeks of content. Mm -hmm. And so I think content marketing should be the basis of any marketing strategy, because if you have a really great blog post, you can go so many different directions with it. One of my clients right now, she takes the blog posts that we write, and then she does a video and uses it almost like a script. Mm -hmm. And then she shares that video to her social media, and we embed the video on her website. So she's hitting both of those metrics of like, People like video, social media likes video, but she doesn't write it. She just records it and puts her own personality into it. And so I write two blog posts for her a month and her marketing is, I never see a lapse in it. We've taken little pieces and that's it. That's all we do. The two blog posts a month. So exactly, exactly. Um, I did that, uh, the live video too. I would take the blog and just do like a 90 second video of what was in the blog or highlighting it. If you want more, here's the link. I, I love this stuff. Um, and, and, and I love the collaboration aspect of it as well. Like when you're promoting or like for the strawberry festival example, like you being one of the great places to go visit as you're doing the tour, it's just so good for your community because we're a small business y'all and we're community. And by working together, we grow together. I want to ask you a question because I will get pushed back when somebody says, I want to grow my Instagram following. I want to, I want to grow that. I want to get it to 10 K blah, blah, blah. And I, and they're a local brick and mortar and they don't want to invest the time energy into the blog. I know what my answer is. Um, I would like to have you comment on that. And then I, I want to see if we line up there, but I always push back why. And, and then how, how do you get them to turn around and be convinced on the SEO or doing a blog? So social media. So I know a lot of people are real focused on like a platform, you know, um, but before I made the switch to just focusing on content marketing and SEO, I was actually doing a lot of Pinterest marketing. And in the last two years, Pinterest has completely changed. And clients that I had that were getting 80, 90% of their traffic from Pinterest, it dropped to zero. It was insane. And so any social media platform to me, You as the business owner have no say in what they do. Like we have no say in how their algorithm changes. We have no say in how our reach is. We're just posting on someone else's platform. So while I think that if your client is on a platform, it's good to show up and be present. 
my goal from all my clients is to draw people to their website and then hopefully get people to join their mailing list because we own our mailing lists. And if all of those other platforms went away, we can still email our list. And so if Instagram was super important, then I would also still use content marketing, SEO, take those content pieces, use them as Instagram posts, however I could, you know, maybe you make reels, you do live video, all those things, but try and get people back to your website in one way or the other and get them on that mailing list because those social media platforms are amazing, but they could go away tomorrow. Like Mm -hmm. it's not, we don't own them. And I used to think like, Oh, it's Pinterest. It'll never change. And then one by one, all my clients, it was like, wow, we were getting hundreds of visitors to our website every month. And one of them, one month, it was like two, two yeah. visitors. And it was, was just, just like, talking to another business owner today who her, hers was all Pinterest and it's gone down so much and nobody yeah. can tell her why. So no, I mean, all the things they're saying now that are best practices that I, cause I still have a few Pinterest clients. We're doing them. Nothing's changing. And so it's mm-hmm. like, but all the people that she had driven to her website from Pinterest that are now on her mailing list, she still can com- communicate with them. So as much as social media, I think is important, especially if your client is on certain platforms. Mm-hmm. Like my one thing is choose, don't do them all because that's mm-hmm. super overwhelming, but like find the one where your client is, but always try and get them to get on your mailing list or, mm-hmm. or you know, consume your content and opt in somewhere so that if that platform makes a major change, you suddenly aren't like, where's my audience? Mm-hmm. Because it's really devastating when that happens. It is, it is. Just a couple of months ago, Instagram was unavailable for a few hours and it was just yeah. very eye-opening then that I was like, oh my gosh. Yeah, I'm so glad I have my email list. So back to that social media versus a blog. Really, Melissa? Nobody nobody reads blogs. No, maybe nobody reads them, but Google does. Mm-hmm. And we want to be found. And that goes back to the statistic of most people that are searching are doing a Google search. And you're going to be found on Google. I have a friend who has this really cute boutique and no SEO, amazing Instagram, but no SEO. And I'm like, maybe I'm, maybe I'm a dinosaur. Maybe I'm like, (laughs) usually if I'm going to go to a cute town and do some shopping, I'm going to Google shops in that town or things like that. Maybe I'm, I'm not necessarily going to Instagram to search stores in whatever town I'm going to. So If I go to Instagram, it's usually after I've been in the store already or after I saw it, but it's not to find something. Like if I want to find a spa in a different town, I'm going to Google that. But once I'm there and I like it, I'm going to then follow you on Instagram. So do you see the difference, y'all? So in order to be found, we need to have good SEO. Yeah, absolutely. And I think the thing about social media, and especially really visual like Instagram specifically, because it's so visual. And so it's great for like super beautiful images. I used to be in the wedding industry and Instagram was really important, but the the lifespan of an Instagram post is, uh, I feel like it's less than like two hours. It's because people don't scroll back that far. And so if someone's following you and they miss a post, it's sort of like, well, they don't see that. But if they're searching and they get driven to your website, you could, I mean, you can put a plugin on your website where they can see your whole Instagram, which yeah. so if that's important, have that there. But that consistent content and that SEO traffic, that has a lot more longevity. So if something did happen with your Pinterest account or, you know, you, I've heard horror stories of people's accounts getting hacked and they couldn't get back in. And so it's like if ever, if all your eggs are in that basket, it's very difficult to recover quickly if something happens. So I, I feel like my clients serve clients of all ages and it still seems like websites and getting people to your website is very important no matter the target market. Okay, so I have a business. I have a brick and mortar business. I have a website. What are like three or five things that I should be doing to help my SEO? So first thing, have that consistent content. So Google is constantly crawling websites to see, you know, like, is there anything new? So if you don't ever change anything, it kind of becomes stagnant. So even if you're, if your consistent schedule is one post a month, you know, just be consistent and 
put something up that's keyword optimized. So you're, you know, feeding the, the Google algorithm. The other things would be like, make sure if you're local, because your business is local, you're hitting all those local keywords. A lot of times we just assume like that's like, oh, you know, my business is in Marysville. So of course people will find me here, but you want to make sure that's in your text somewhere. Um, you can talk about if you serve outside, like surrounding communities, look at all the local words you can put into your text so that if anyone's searching any of those kind of things, you're popping up. Also make sure you set up your Google My Business account, which is, it's just asking you like a lot of those standard, you know, where are you? You can put in like what you do, a description of your business, photos, all that stuff. Anything that Google's asking you to do, I'm a big fan of doing it because they're the ones <laughs> that we want to make happy. Um, so make sure that you have that all set up. Make sure that your site is loading quickly. So that's sort of on yes. the technical SEO yes. side of things. You don't want people like there are beautiful websites that have tons of, you know, moving images and all the things. But when you go to them on mobile, you might be sitting there and it's like, this is not loading. People will not stick around for like more than three seconds. Like three seconds is probably generous. So you want to make sure that it is loading quickly. And then also you're optimized for mobile and for desktop. Most people are using a device. It's, I mean, it used to be like desktop was super important. It still is, but especially if you're a local business and people are out and about, they're looking for you on their device, their iPad, their phone. So there's nothing more annoying than going to a website on your phone. And the whole thing is like all just a mess because nothing is optimized. So that's like the technical side of it, but just Whenever you make any changes to your website, just give it a look on multiple devices so that you know, like, okay, it's loading correctly. All the images and words are lining up how they should. It's easily navigatable. I mean, my, even my website, it says it's optimized for, it was optimized for mobile, but I noticed when it was on my phone, if I clicked the menu, I couldn't actually click on anything. Like it was too small. Mm -hmm. So just those little like user things because it's, of yeah. course, people on the website, but if they're frustrated and have a bad experience, they're probably not coming back. Yeah. So, That's so true. I just, yeah, I'm prepping for something I'm speaking at in a couple of weeks. And if, if the customer journey is at all negative, you, you lost them. So yeah. that's, that's huge. You guys, huge, yeah. such good advice. Um, I know in my, even in your tabs, like in your pages tabs to say dance classes in Hudson versus just dance lessons, yeah. but be specific. And it doesn't have to be shown. It can be hidden, but I take care of that. But when you talk to, if you do your own website or somebody helps you with that, that's all, those are all keywords that should be put in, in your tabs and in your pages and headings and stuff like that. So, and you can go to, um, Google ads. If you have like, uh, you can set it up. It's, you don't have to run an ad, but you can use their keyword finder. And so you can just like spend some time typing in words that relate to your business and it'll show you like how often are those searched? How competitive are they? So if you are trying to rank amongst like a huge national brand, it's like, that's probably not going to happen right away. So you want to like <laughs> choose words that aren't like, oh, wow, this is never going to happen. You want to, you know, find the ones that you can actually rank for and really focus on those. But the Google at, I think it's AdWords tool is really helpful for that because it'll give you like how competitive. And if you ever want to run ads, it's what you'll be using. So it's a, it's a helpful tool. And if you decide to do your own SEO and you have a WordPress website, you can use something called Yoast and it'll walk you through all the things. So you can, it is totally DIYable. It's just, it's a commitment. Um, mm -hmm. You want to do it for every single page, every single blog post, and make sure that you're going back and revisiting your old blog posts to do any updates, things like that. It's, it's SEO is kind of an ongoing, just check-in with all your content. So just like in designing a website, a lot of people think like, oh, my website's done. It's good to go forever. And that's not the case. You got to check in on the links and all that stuff. The same goes for SEO. You want to always make sure you're kind of updating and making sure you're still ranking and watching your Google analytics and seeing how everything is continually working for you. Okay. Now, if I don't want to do that though, if I don't have the time capacity, I would reach out to you, correct? 
Right. So <laughs> yeah, so we work with people really in two ways. So either if you're a content creator and you just need the SEO piece, then we do that on a monthly retainer. Or if someone's like, you know what, I need content, I need SEO, then we have monthly retainers for actually writing content, figuring out, you know, all the right keywords, how is it going to um, be scheduled, all of those things. So that's really the two main ways that we work with people. And most of our clients fall into the, they want content and the SEO together. Okay. So let's say we either invest in you or we are DIYers and did I say that right? No, DIYers. (laughs) DIYers. And either way, either way, you're going to pay for it, either with money or your time. And you start investing in getting better SEO. How long should somebody anticipate a result? I usually see results in about three to six months is when you can really expect to start seeing it. Mm -hmm. Um, Every once in a while, you know, you might hit a term that's like super non-competitive that lots of people are searching for and it, you know, helps. But organic traffic growth does take time. Because a lot of people use social media and they see like, oh, well, I posted this. And then 20 minutes later, I had all of these like comments and likes. It's definitely not that. It is a long-term strategy you're putting in place where you're consistently creating content. You're consistently doing all the SEO work on the back end of your website. And then over time, Google starts delivering traffic to you. Mm -hmm. So I work with people for a minimum of six months. And usually by the end of six months, we have seen significant growth. Mm -hmm. Um, So, but usually it's in like that three month mark, you start to see on their analytics, a little tracking upward. So, yeah. Yeah. I would say the same thing, three to six months. I think, I think three is doable. I think it can happen. Um, Make sure you're always asking your clients where they found you. Okay. So you know, what's working. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm not really good about checking Google analytics, even though if it's emailed to me, I just kind of whatever, but we have great SEO. I know that. And I know that most of my clients are finding me through Google and we're popping up. Yeah. And it's, especially if you're repurposing, um, like your content, you can look at your Google analytics and see like, did they come from Pinterest? Did they come from Facebook? And kind of figure out like, okay, I posted this on this day. So maybe there is like a certain social media platform that's working really well. You can look back and see like, well, did it have to do with this content that I created at the very beginning? Um, You can have it track back from, you know, your email marketing, all of that. But that's something, again, marketing is something that is not, it's not brain surgery, but It can be very, there's a lot to, there's a lot of little things. And a lot of times I see people that are like, oh yeah, I'm doing A, B, C, D, E. It's like, okay, well, what's working for you? And they're like, I don't know. Like, because they're not actually doing the the measurement on the other end. So we we do monthly reports for our clients because I mean, at the end of six months of working with us, you know, especially with the pen, when Pinterest started taking a downturn, it was like, I can't in good conscience say you should keep doing this. So it's like, you want to make, you know, measured decisions so that you're like, you know what, I tried this for six months. It is not working. You can invest your money elsewhere Mm -hmm. because there are a lot of places that will be happy to take your marketing dollars and you want to make sure that you're putting them in the right place. That's actually delivering, you know, people through your door. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. So where can people find you to learn more about working with you? If that is something that they're interested in. Yeah. So my website is just pinwheelstrategicmarketing.com. Um, and I actually set up uh, pinwheelstrategicmarketing.com slash brick. So I'm going to have a special like SEO starter guide specifically for brick and mortar businesses. Awesome. So that's just going to give you kind of like a step-by-step of like how to even check where you're at. So feel free to download that. Um, but all the information is on our website um, and you can just contact me through there. Awesome. See, now she was super smart by giving us that because now she's going to know where you came from and she'll be able to track that and know where her marketing energy went well. Awesome. Well done, Amber. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, This is something that's super important um, as brick and mortar business owners. Like I said, we're local. We depend on our community to support us. And in order to have them support us, they need to find us. So thank you for sharing your insights. Go see Amber and check her out and see what she's all about. Download that freebie she has for us. Thank you so much. And if you have any questions or comments, please DM either of us. Um, Where's your best social for you? 
Redemption it's message. actually LinkedIn. So awesome. it's just LinkedIn. And my name is just Amber A. Peterson on there. Awesome. We'll put that in the show notes too. Thank you so much, Amber. Thanks for sharing your wisdom and everybody Thank else. You. Have a great week. We'll see you here. Same time, same place next week. Peace. Bye-bye. Oh my gosh, you're still here. You are such a rebel woman. I have to meet you. Come on over to the Rebel Women Tribe on Facebook, created for brick and mortar business owners just like you. In this group, we empower, encourage, and support each other. And every week I come in and share with you a tip, tool, or strategy that I'm learning in my brick and mortar business to help you in yours. And you guys, this is the real stuff, the nitty gritty in real time of what's going on. So come on over to the Rebel Women Tribe on Facebook. I can't wait to meet you.